The Toronto Argonauts had an exceptional 2021 regular season, but were unable to punch their ticket with a victory in the East Division Final. Argonauts first year head coach Ryan Dinwiddie is the East Division nominee for CFL Coach of the Year. You had your starting quarterback in place with an existing roster, but there was a lot of, of player turnover uh, from 2019 to 2021. Um, was that an advantage to you know being a new head coach and wanting to bring in you know how you do business, the culture you want to establish when uh, you can almost start fresh for the most part? Yeah, I think that was what we wanted to do. You know, and, and COVID actually helped us in, in that way. So our first year we got a roster built up where we could be competitive. And I think our last year we got it uh, you know done where we can actually win some football games. So uh, that gave us an extra year to build it, which was nice. But we wanted to just start fresh and bring in our own guys to kind of get our culture going in the right direction. And, and some of the ball players we're looking for, you know, what are, what are their skill sets for this position group compared to some others that we won't really wanted to hang our hat on. We did that, and I think we still got a long ways to go as far as culture. Everybody's pretty new to it, but I think we're going in the right direction. Define that culture. What do you what do you want it to be? I just want guys to, to be pros and understand what it is, and, and really enjoy each day and, uh, and, and and push each other to get better. I want to be a I want to be a physical football team, but I also want to be a smart football team. And uh, I think we we show to be physical, but I don't know how smart we were. And uh, you know. Though that I think discipline came up, to, you know, bite us at the end. And this, that's when they always preach the discipline and didn't do enough. Uh, I guess didn't do a good enough job, I guess, of getting across to some of our players. But I think you know, building uh, forward, I think we can get that uh, in our building, and it's going to be uh, crucial for us and for our growth that we got to be more disciplined. Of course, you. I'm sure you would have preferred to be a head coach in this game on Sunday and be here with your team. Uh, no doubt, uh, disappointing uh, loss in the playoffs. But uh, are you encouraged? With with what you've established this year and, and what you got going into next season. Yeah, we got a lot, to, a lot to build off, and we got a lot of ways to go too at the same time. But I think we we got the ball going the right direction. Uh, you know, we got the right players in the building. We have to add a few. Yes, we have to get rid of a few. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. the culture's getting to where it needs to be. Uh, but I think guys feel comfortable. You know, going to Toronto, I understand it's a different environment than it has been in years past. You can come here and you, you can win there. Uh, great city to live in, but at the same time, it's uh, going to be a football environment. We're looking to make sure that's the focus focus of it you know that's sure. a great place to live in but football's why you're here and um, I think people understand that you know back in the day they didn't have a facility now we got a great facility BMO right. people are doing the right things and it starts with leadership from the top of pinball Clements and I couldn't be happier to, to work and learn from him and I think you know he builds this culture in the right direction guys want to come here so I couldn't be happier working for him you're up for CFL coach of the year against Mike O'Shea the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and you know, when, when he started, the, the, the roster needed a lot of work, and, and obviously that's taken time to, to grow and develop and, and foster that culture that he wanted to have there. Do you look at those successful teams around the CFL? When Winnipeg was rebuilding, they would say the Calgary Stampeders model. Do you look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and, and kind of the mix that they have and, and pull things from it? I would say so. I think, you know, it's always been Calgary. They've done a great job there for the last 20 years. They had Montreal for, for a bit, but now you look at Calgary, Saskatchewan, and Winnipeg, and now Hamilton. You know, those four franchises, have got the ball rolling. There's identity to them. There's a culture mm -hmm. that they have. And you know, I think four, it took Mike four years to get going. And you look what he's done the last few years. I really appreciate the job he's done for the league. I look up to him, and you know, he's done a great job there. And a lot of people didn't think he'd get it done. And it happened in the last three years. You can really see it. Guys want to be a part of the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bomber locker room. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell the way they play for each other. So those are the things we're trying to get done in Toronto. Wanted to ask you about your playing career. You know, we're based in Winnipeg. Lots of our viewers are, are uh, you know, um, familiar with you and, and uh, you know, your time with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Do you uh, still think back on that Grey Cup and, and draw on those experiences, share them with your guys? Oh, no doubt. I, I brought up to guys and I've had, you know, from other places I've been too, I still bring up stuff to guys and, and use examples to, you know, put these guys in the right frame of mind of you know, mm -hmm. what it takes to be a champion and, and those things. But I look forward to, the, uh, you know, looking back on those things. I have a lot of good, good friends that I met in Winnipeg that still live in Winnipeg. Yeah. They're still part of the organization. Uh, friends that are friends of mine I go see in the States and, uh, you know, some of the Canadians, Americans, we, you know, we'll go grab a beer the night for a game when I come into town. So I really appreciate my time there. Um, unfortunately, it didn't end the way we wanted to, but I still think we did some good things there. Uh, you know, they hadn't been in the playoffs, so we go three years in a row. It just unfortunately didn't, didn't work out. But uh, it was a, a special spot uh, for me to start my CFL career, and it's got a special spot in my heart. And uh, had three great years there. So as a former quarterback and now a head coach, you're in a league where there's a lot of those. I mean, Kahari Jones and. Uh, uh, 
Dave Dickinson and, and you know the general manager there as well and John Huffnagel. Then you have the other side of the coin with defensive players and, and special teams coaches that are, are head coaches as well. Does that play into the overall game plan or, or strategy when you're facing a team that's like, okay, I'm not facing another quarterback, I'm facing, you know, uh, tackle leader Mike O'Shea? Yeah, well, I think, you know, Mike's going to have his uh, football club ready to go and they're not going to do anything to hurt themselves. That's that's the one thing. So he's done a great job of doing that. And special teams are going to find a way uh, find a way to make a play. But those guys play together. Uh, you can see why they've been in this game the last two years and what they've accomplished in a short period of time. But, uh, you know, they look the same thing with Hamilton. You know, they're going to play great defense. Special teams are going to be great. They're going to be physical. Mm -hmm. They're going to find a way to get a you know onside kick or, you know, something in special teams to, to give them an advantage. So uh, those guys all do a great job. You can, and you can tell that there's a reason why they're here. And we're trying to chase that and, and to get that foundation where we're consistently in this game as well. Ryan, you've coached uh, in this league now in both divisions, and it's a small league. There's nine teams, of course, but do you notice a difference in the way the football's played or, or how the teams are constructed or anything like that between East and West now that you've been in both? Well, I think the East is catching up with the West a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we're playing a little bit more of a physical uh, nature of football, you know, run the ball downhill, do, do, doing certain things. But I think, you know, you, you don't go out East and go, okay, that's a win anymore. You know, you we've went, went one out West, right? Uh, other teams out East have went one out West now. Not, not in Winnipeg, not Saskatchewan these, uh, this year. But you know, I think that, you know, each week you can't say there's the East and West uh, division. There's uh, nine good football teams in the CFL. And, and since my time uh, being in this league since 05, I think this is the, the most consistent the league is as far as coaches and from top to bottom. So um, when I first came in the league, I didn't feel like there was a ton of great coaches around this league. Now I feel like there's more than uh, plenty of great coaches and guys that are still waiting for their opportunities that de right. deserve an opportunity to be great too. So um, very well coached teams and, and, and that the players are still playing at a high level. So, um, you know, scoring was down this year, but I don't think the, the, the caliber of athletes were any different. You know, people were just finding ways to, you know, uh, get it done on defense and special teams. Last question for you. Uh, your Argonauts split the season series with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and, and uh, you know, a strong win at home early in the season uh, against Winnipeg. Um, it sounds cliche, but a lot of people just say the Argonauts went out there and they, they punched the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the mouth, and that's why you were able to get a two-point win. What did you see in that game? What was the difference that elevated your team to a win against a team that, frankly, has been dominant in the CFL this season? Well, they're one of the uh, best defenses I've, I've faced as a coach and a player. Uh, I mean, they're, they're right up there. So uh, the one thing with them, you got to be able to run the football. And if you're not running the football, you know, Jeff Code and Willie are going to have a great day. And Richardson up front, 98, he can get out the passer. But he's one of those guys you got to blow off the ball a little bit. you got to double team him. And, uh, you know, and then you got Big Hill right there, you know, where if you don't double up and get to him, he's going to shoot the A gap, B gap. And be that 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 gap, uh, you know, player. So, I mean, they're 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 darn solid. So you're gonna have to play your best game. And if you don't play your best game, they're gonna run you run you out of the building in a hurry. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.